Many Muslims, when they come from overseas, they leave Islam back in their home country. I mean, they bring their traditions, they bring their culture, but their traditions have nothing to do with Islam. For example, the idea of a forced marriage where a woman gets married without her consent, Islam doesn't allow that. Plus, it's totally messed up, man. Islam liberated people from this ignorant way of thinking. But some Muslims, they love their culture more than they love Islam. And that's why they're willing to compromise their religion for the sake of their culture. Joke! 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 Now, I'm not saying that all culture is bad. There's a lot of great things we can learn from different cultures. There's tasty food, beautiful artwork, rich languages, and so much more. I'm referring to the parts of the culture that conflict with Islam. You know one of the things that confuses a non-Muslim? It's when they see a Muslim take part of Islam and part of their culture, put it all together, and label the whole thing Islam. Not only are you giving Islam a bad name, but you're confusing everybody. You see, if you add or subtract anything from Islam, it's not Islam anymore. And there's so many Muslims who try to customize Islam just so it meets their desires. Desires. Alhamdulillah, I found Islam before I met these type of Muslims. Alhamdulillah. As a convert, I can tell you that Islam is a very beautiful religion. This is why I feel bad for a child who grows up in a family where Islam is not given to him properly. You know who I'm talking about. The parents who purposely teach only parts of Islam, the parts that benefit them. The child grows up misunderstanding Islam because he sees his parents compromising it. You know what I'm talking about, man. How about the father who occasionally closes up his liquor store so he can go to Jummah prayers? Oh brother, it's not halal to have business open during Jummah. Bro, it's a liquor store! Your business isn't even halal! How about the mother who tells her daughter to put on hijab on the masjid stairs, but then tells her to take it off for the interview? What's up with that? This is why your kid grows up all confused. They can't tell the difference between what is culture and what is Islam. But you don't take it seriously. You're like, ah. Until the day you wake up. The day I wake up? The day you wake up and you find out that your kids are not kids anymore? They're teenagers. <laughs> They're teenagers! You know, that's when their hormones start going crazy and you start losing your hair. Your daughter starts asking questions about having a boyfriend. And what type of plastic surgery are you cool with, dad? You freak out and tell her to go talk to her mom. But then your son wants to talk to you about tattoos and what parts of his body he wants to get pierced. So you try to talk to him. But since you never talked to him, you lost the channels of communication a long time ago. Basically, you have no idea what the boy is saying anymore. It goes something like this. Yo, 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 pops. I'm about to go bounce and play some b-ball. So if my homies call me, tell them to call me on my cell. I'll catch you later. What? What are you saying? Where are you going? Loves to hang out and chill, but I got to go, pops. And the other 411 I told you to keep on the DL? You got to keep that on the hush-hush, baby. Anyways, I'm out here like a Saudi. I got to go. Peace. Later, Pops. 411 Audi Saudi, what? What are you saying? Where are you going? Where are you going? Now you're really worried and you don't know what to do. But it gets worse. You find out that your kids have those not so Islamic pictures on their MySpace account? Now your son has chosen the career of gangster rapper for himself. And your daughter wants to be a part-time model, part-time feminist. Actually, her whole feminist movement is because of you. You see, throughout her life, she's been watching the way you've been unjustly treating her mother. You brought your back home mentality where you thought you're the king and she's your slave. And since you didn't treat your wife properly the way Islam teaches you to do so, your daughter is now rebelling against you and your backwards way of thinking. You see, Islam teaches us that the best of you is who's best to his wife. But apparently you didn't take that part of Islam seriously. And now you're paying for it. And right when you think the relationship between you and your daughter can't get any worse, you hear those four words that make you want to cringe. But I love him! At this point, you start to panic. Ah. You look at your wife and say, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You see, you brought all this drama upon yourself because you didn't teach your kids Islam. Instead, you raised them with customs that conflicted with the teachings of Islam. As little kids, they follow those customs. But guess what? They're young adults now, and they're thinking on their own. Because they see the errors in the backwards customs that they were raised with. Here's a reality check for you. Many kids have no intention to practice the culture of their parents. So instead they picked up their own culture. Not that it's any better than your culture. Sometimes it's actually worse. So instead of picking up your culture, they decide to pick up their own. By the way, don't you wish you'd tell them about Islam right about now? You see, in this new culture that your kids just picked up, it's cool to be rebellious. So they don't listen to you. And since you never gave them role models, or you were never role models for them, they decide to pick up their own role models. People they can look up to, people they can imitate. Society teaches them what is cool and what is not. Everything from the way they dress, to the way they act, to even the slang they use. 
Didn't you see the signs? Remember last Eid? Boy, what do you want for Eid? Yo, Pops, how about some of that bling bling? Okay, bling bling. We get him bling bling. What is bling bling? Now you tried everything you can as a last resort. You drop off your kids at the Sunday class. You know that's the weekly Sunday class for the young kids at the masjid? The one you never took them to? So you drop them off at the masjid hoping the volunteer staff perform some type of miracle. But your kids don't even give the class a chance. Everything goes in one ear and out the other. Now your kids think you're a hypocrite because you tell them to do something that you don't do yourself. If you were praying, fasting, and doing all the other things that you tell your children to do, maybe they would have done it. It's like someone telling you, <coughs> don't be a smoker. <coughs> It'll kill you. <coughs> How do you respect that? So many kids go away from Islam because Islam was not presented correctly to them. They get taught the modified version, where parents mix the culture with Islam and package the whole thing under the label of Islam. And then they see the errors in the culture. Yes, parents have rights in Islam, but your children have rights too. If you know Islam, teach it to your kids. Don't just tell them about how to be a good Muslim. Be a role model. That means you have to do it too. If we practice Islam the way the Prophet Islam taught us to practice it, we wouldn't be in this mess. But as long as we love our customs more than we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will continue to suffer. You know what I'm saying? This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot.